date. 16th of September, 2016. Wait, we're not going to go there. Uh, calories. Actually, not too bad today. Caffeine intake. <laughs> Have a fuck ton. And today, I saw Bridget Jones's baby. 15 years after the original Bridget Jones came out. And it's, uh, you know, I was very judgmental of this film when I first saw the trailer because... I argue that Bridget Jones is not a nice person because she is treated like shit, but she treats people like shit. So, and it's kind of weird revisiting the character after so many years. There was that second film that came out, I forgot to think about 10 years ago, which wasn't that brilliant. And now there's this film. And I'm going to give it some positives right now. It really kind of encapsulates what it's like being single in your 40s or late 30s, early 40s when everyone in your life is settling down. I mean, seriously, all her friends, her spinster friends, or singleton friends, are settling down. Two of them are married, okay? Um, Shazza and, is it Jude? Yeah, Shazza and Jude are married with children. Then Tom, okay, also, oh, by the way, I am going to spoil this film. I am going to say who the daddy is, okay? I'm going to do a spoiler bar, but you're watching this at your own peril. Even Tom is settling down. <laughs> And adopting a baby. Problem is though is that we never actually meet Tom's partner he's just mentioned which I thought was a shame okay so bits that we loved about these characters we loved the friendships we loved their motivations we liked them themselves they kind of brushed aside for Bridget and her drama which I thought was a bit of a letdown I wanted to meet more of their partners I wanted to meet more of their children I wanted to meet Tom's partner never do okay so, story is line is this. Now, Bridget Jones, and it does start out very similar to the first one sing All By Myself, then it becomes Jump Around, you know the song, <laughs> you know. If you're humming it in your head, yeah, you will be. And, you know, she is now 40, in her early 40s. She's 41, okay, so she's 42. And she's broken up, broke up with Mr. Darcy. And Daniel Cleaver is not in this, and that's explained at the beginning, okay, why... Um, Duke Ron is not in this film, and it actually becomes quite a nice, comical, touchy moment, which is very much in character. But then we find out that she broke up with Mark, and she's been broken up with Mark for quite some time, after a 10-year, pretty much toxic relationship with him. And then Mark married someone else called Camilla, mm -hmm. and we find out through the film how they broke up, and this is all done through Bridget's point of view. But looking at it, it's... the problem with this relationship with Mark is it became so toxic and you're watching this film and that's in the back of your mind and okay I loved Mark he is the epitome of Mr Darcy actually you find out Mark Darcy's middle name is Mr Darcy's first name in From Pride and Prejudice here you go okay see spoiler okay um you find out why they broke up and oh my god character wise okay I'm gonna quickly discuss the characters here Character wise, they have totally screwed up Mark's character. In the first two films, he was very kind of strict and uptight, but he has some nice comical moments, some humane touches. Mr. Spock in Star Trek shows more motion than this guy. Honestly, it's the worst. It is the absolute worst. And there's this kind of moments where Bridget has to make this, this will be a choice because, okay, sorry, storyline here. She goes to Glastonbury, they don't actually call it Glastonbury in the film, but it's Glastonbury, okay, and has a drunken one night stand and she has crap cummed on and she gets, um, she sleeps with McDreamy, um, Patrick Dempsey, and um, then a week later at christening she hooks up with Mark, so now it becomes who's a daddy, and the failure is on Bridget because she had out of date condoms, okay, so there lies the problem right now is the relationship between Patrick Dempsey's character, okay, Jack, who is a billionaire, an author, he's adorable, he is a mathematician who comes up with this algorithm for love, okay, about compatibility. His chemistry with Bridget is brilliant. He is a billionaire, but he's not uptight with it, he's not judgmental. He's actually quite cool and understanding, and when he finds out about Mark possibly being the father, he is upset, but he still steps up. Now, with Mark, when she announces exactly the same thing, oh my God, his reaction, he just comes across so cold. And you're watching it thinking, 
with one you have a general a genuine warm chemistry with this guy yet with mr darcy colin firth you can't help it he's an actor following a script it becomes so forced and i just sat there thinking bridget i really hope you know because you kind of see through that the interactions how toxic their relationship must have become because bridget feels that she has to kind of force her laughter force herself to laugh to kind of like get on with him it I, it's just not nice okay and i can i get that she's in love with mark but she kind of needs to really move on from that and that is pointed out through miranda who's played by so i need to get a name because i've actually heard of her before her name's sarah Soleimani. sarah Soleimani played miranda who actually works with bridget at his tv show she is spot on she is funny witty her timing her comic timing is so natural and you believe the relationship between her and bridget her original friends her spinster friends when they were sitting down have moved on but she's got miranda and i love her give miranda a spin-off please <laughs> here you go see um but one thing i did like about this film is that characters individual characters you see that they grow um her mother um, evolves as a character she opens it borders her horizons um she's more opening to like the world around her after bridget call, call, calls her up on her behavior um but at the same time it feels like bridget is basically looking her nose down on her mother for being the way she is and basically saying well if you don't respect the fact that i'm going to be a single mother well i'm done with you kind of thing and i just sat there thinking bridget you're not giving your mother a chance right now you've walked in to dump it on your mother, okay, that you're pregnant, you don't know who the father is, and you expect her to just kind of accept it just like that, that's unfair, okay? You know, you did it in the space of like less than five minutes, that's just not fair on anyone. But so, um, Gemma Jones, who plays the mother, kudos though, because it was nice seeing you again, and and the father, played by the marvellous Sir Jim Broadbent, who is just, he's just marvellous, isn't he? So, no disrespect to Jim Broadbent, we like Jim Broadbent. But, now, the biggest problem, though, is the central issue at who's the father, and therein lies the problem, because us fans of Bridget Jones, we have history with Mark Darcy. We've read him in the books. He got killed off in the third one, which is why we know one likes the third one. Um, you know, so even though we don't like Mark that much as a character, because he's way too uptight. Oh, he's actually divorcing his wife, by the way, which is why he did hooks up with Bridget, okay? Even though we don't like him at times we know his character you know characters evolve after all um but and then there's this um you know and mark overall i mean he was way more fun in the first two films he was way too uptight because he's counteracting with patrick dempsey's jack and jack's marvelous there lies the problem these two guys are fantastic fathers or possible fathers and no matter who is the father the other one will be devastated and that's kind of uncomfortable to watch because what side will you be on who will be the father when they're both going to be fantastic at it okay never try to really kind of force bridget's hand and okay jack does something a bit kind of dickish but unlike a lot like um counteract to what um daniel cleaver would have done he admits it he admits that he screwed up the fact that you know he tried to kind of push mark away and it's all kind of resolved yeah so this film is quite, I don't know, it's, when you, first Bridget Jones film came out, I was 21, I'm now 36, I've kind of evolved as Bridget Jones has, okay, and it brings up stuff that if you're at a certain point, you've got to, you've got to confront, like, you may be in your um, 30s, but you'll have a geriatric womb, which is true, sadly, you know, the whole kind of, you know, at a certain point, there's more health complications so an amniocentesis is brought up too and it is very very uh it's clever how to kind of push that in at the feeling how you're moving on but you're or you're not moving on but your friends are the film actually opens on bridget jones's birthday where all her friends who aren't smug marries but they are settled they can't get a babysitter so they can't be there which i think everyone He's been everyone, including myself, nodded like, "Yeah, I, I know how that feels." So it captures what it's like to be a certain point and single, okay. But at the same time, the problem is these two guys are too likable. 
Now, oh, this is the point where I'm going to discuss who the father is. Okay, spoiler, spoiler bar, okay? The baby is marked. At the end of the film, the, not the last couple of minutes, after the baby is born, the baby is a boy, they go off to get a DNA test. And then, yeah, and the baby turns out to be marks. Which upset me in a way because I thought I wanted the baby to be Jack's. I wanted the baby to be baby. There you go. And then, spoiler, not I'll just put a spoiler here. It then ends at Billet Jones's wedding where we don't know. And then we see Jack with the baby. It's a year, it cuts to a year later. And then we see her back to Mary Mark. And Jack is basically, he's become the best man. So he becomes the cool friend that Mark possibly always wanted, which is unrealistic. But it's kind of like what you wanted in a way. Just keep us on that last bit. Character-wise, though, Renny Zellweger looks fantastic. Okay. She has actually mentioned in the um, film that she's funny at her dream weight. And she she looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm not criticising Renny Zellweger. It's nice to have her back as Bridget. And it is nice to have Colin Firth back to as Mark. So, yeah, I was very dismissive of this film, but I thought it was beautiful, in a way. Now, Bridget Jones, though, can, does come across as quite selfish. They're in, they're in my opinion, she's quite realistic for the zeitgeist, in a way, of the, because she is a bit of a selfish character. She doesn't tell the two guys that they could both possibly be the father for months, not until she has to tell them. They both appear at a work event and she has to tell the truth afterwards about what's really going on. And both of them face up to their responsibilities, which I thought was nice. But the fact that she let it go on way too long was unfair. Now, one thing I did like is it's now the 21st century, of, obviously. It's now, you know, it's a new generation and she is now a um, production, what's in production for a TV show. And she's got a new boss, who's basically like Cruella de Vil. If they ever did a remake of 101 Dimensions, just, you've got Cruella de Vil just there. Um, I'm going to do a cast list. She's been in a lot of films, but I can't actually remember her name. Uh, and it, it's true about the, you know, trying to make it in a 21st century world, especially when you're pregnant. And I did like the fact that all her colleagues, even though Bridget Jones is Bridget Jones, and she's a perpetual fuck-up, okay? Um, this actually does make her quite likeable. They rallied around her. It wasn't like, you know, we're all in a lot of production or like films where essentially everyone's out for each other. Everyone was behind Bridget because they knew that she was a screw up. They respected her for who she was, which I thought was nice. There you go. So the first two films had a central conflict of between Mark and um, Daniel. The second one, she was in a Thai prison. The problem is with this film is there is conflict, but Bridget is the one that really provides a the conflict. There's no fight in the street, there's no Thai prison. It is essentially the stuff that Bridget causes. So in comparison to the first two, I don't think it's as good. But it's nice. That's the best way to describe this film, it's nice. It's just a funny British comedy, there's some killer lines. Emma Thompson who actually wrote the script, along with Helen Fielding, and um, Sharon, I can't remember her last name, but she directed the first two. She's back for this as well. She also plays Shazza in the films as well. She is, she wrote the, co-wrote the script and she gets some of the best lines as Bridget's Doctor. She's having some fun. Okay, well, it's Emma Thompson. We can't hate on Emma Thompson. So I did enjoy this film. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. It's kind of what you expect from Bridget. You know, the perpetual screw up who, hey, Gets a happy ever after, but after three of your films of her wanting to find true love, yeah, it's a nice to kind of bring it full circle. So I don't want a fourth one. For this moment, Bridget Jones, Bridget Jones should end right here. So anyway, spoilers, and thanks for watching, and take care. Sign off. Bye now.